Welcome back to the scripture spoken. So we are on day 10. I pray that you guys have been reading along with us. We started in Luke 1 and now today we are in Luke 10 and I am so glad that you guys are joining us. So before I jump into reading this word, let's pray. So, Father God, we thank you for this time. We thank you, Father, that we are able to join together and read your word. We thank you, Father God, for your word that is power and that is might. We thank you, Father God, we have the freedom in this country to study your word and to to join together in one accord across the whole entire world and read your word. There may be others that do not have the ability to have the Bible, but God, they have the ability to hear your word being spoken. So I pray, Father God, that many who hear this reading today will be touched, that things will change in their life. Father God, we thank you for this spoken word that you have given us. We thank you, Father God, for the opportunity to join together again, Lord God, and spread your word. And we and I just ask right now that you move, Father in the midst of reading of your word, in the name of Jesus, because your word is truth, your word is power, and your word delivers. So we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. So Luke 10. After these things, the Lord appointed seven others also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Then he said to them, the harvest truly is great, but the labors are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out labors into the harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. Carry nothing, carry neither money bag, knapsack, or sanders, sandals, and greet no one along the road. But whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest on it. If not, it will return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking such things as they give, for the labor is worthy of his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you. And heal the sick there and, and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whatever city you enter and they do not receive you, go out into its streets and say, the very dust of your city which clings to us, we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near you. But I say to you that it will be more, more um, tolerable in that day of Sodom than for, for this city. Woe to you, Karzan. Woe to you, Beshida. Sida. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it would be more tolerable to Tyre and Sidon, Sidon at judgment than for you. And you, Caprimin, who are exalt to heaven, will be brought down to Hades. He who hears who he who hears you hears me. He who rejects you rejects me, and he who rejects me rejects him who sent me. Verse 17. Then the 70 returned with joy saying, "Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name." And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and on scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. And nothing shall be, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits of such, 
that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Verse 21. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and pardoned and revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for so it, it seems good in your sight. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows who the Son is except the Father, and who the Father is except the Son, and the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him. Verse 23, then he turned to his disciples and said privately, blessed are the eyes which see the things you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see what you see and have not seen it and to hear what you hear and have not heard it. Verse 25, and behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him saying, teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What is your reading of it? So he answered and said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have answered rightly. Do this and you will live. But he, wanting to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Then Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, who stripped, who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a certain priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a, Le a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, and he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took out two dari and gave them to the innkeeper and said to him, take care of him. And whatever, whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these three do you think has do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And he said, He was show he who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. Verse thirty eight. Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his words. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said, and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. Amen. So, powerful. And um, a lot of things in chapter 10. So, I'm just going to share what I got from reading chapter 10. I don't know. I have like a line, a glare in um, my Karen, but that's okay. You, It's not about me. It's about the word. So the first part where um, after these things, the Lord and the first verse, after these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also 
and sent them two by two before his face into every city and and place where he himself was about to go. So Jesus sent 70 from among his followers, those who were following him. He sent seven, 70 of them. He handpicked them and he divided them two by two to go into the cities that he was going to enter into to minister to those cities like missionaries, to go and minister the gospel into those city and um, spread the word into the city. So it was like, this was like a training exercise to spread the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. That was who was there. You know, the kingdom of heaven had came to earth and to grow the kingdom of heaven, meaning to, to gain souls into the kingdom. And two by two, Helps to, two people at a time helps to encourage each other. So, and then, you know, the Bible says iron sharpened iron, like we are to link together and, and, and encourage each other. So two by two, they were put together and, um, verse two, where it talks about, then he said to him, to them, the harvest is very great. So that was very interesting. And it talks about, you know, the witness of, I'm sorry, let's go back to one. The witness of two people is trustworthy, according to Matthew 18, 20. For where two or more gather together in my name, there I am. That's what Jesus says. So two is a very important, important number as well. So back to verse two, the harvest. The harvest is truly great, but the labors are fewer fewer for for then for so that we can pray you know so let's pray to the lord for the harvest there are so many who are ready to hear the gospel truth truth like truth they want to hear the truth there's so many people that are lost that are looking to hear truth and we carry the truth we carry the gospel which is the truth and but yet the harvest is huge there are so many people but the labors are few there's not too many people speaking truth. Not too many people, again, are, are following what God's word says, what we're supposed to be following. There's false prophets, false preachers, false teachers, just false evangelists that are going around speaking false gospel. So that's why we should be in our word. That's why we are doing this this um, scripture voice, you know, that we're reading scripture, reading that we're joining together, reading God's word and what God's word says. And I pray that you guys are reading for yourself and that you guys are not just listening to what we are saying, but you are dissecting the word for yourself because the Holy Spirit speaks to each one of us when we take the time and we read the word, he will reveal truth to us because in his word, it says, God says, those who seek after me, they shall find me. So if you truly want truth, you seek him and seek those who speak truth according to this written word. So we need heart, we need those laborers. And we need those to be going forth and speaking the gospel. We have to get and we have to be ready quickly. Because nowadays, things are changing. You know, and Jesus was teaching and telling the 70, this needed to happen. They needed to move quickly. And this has to do with us also today. We need to move quickly in spreading the word in spreading the gospel because no man know the hour no man know the, the time when Jesus is coming to return so we need to go and grab souls so we need to be going everywhere grocery stores um um shopping in in church I'm telling you, everywhere in our neighborhood, everywhere, everywhere that we go, we need to be spreading the gospel. We need to be telling people about Jesus. We will be, um, so then verse, another verse that pop out to me is what Jesus also talks about um, us being, so verse, like from verse three, so on, it, you know, it talks about us talk about, you know, the 70 going and not to take any money with them, not to take anything with them, because why? Wherever Jesus was sending them, 
he knew that provision was going to be provided for them. Very good. Because they they needed to trust him, and they did. They went out, and his provision was provided for them. And wherever they stay, so let's jump down to eight. I like this when, you know, it talks about them entering to the city and not being accepted. If people didn't accept them, you know, we will not be... We will not be accepted by everybody when we go forth and bring forth the gospel. Not everybody is going to receive us. Not everybody's going to want to receive the gospel. We will will be outcast, even by church members. Church members, you know, the church itself will be outcast by loved ones, our friends. Um, but as Jesus, you know, we will even be threatened. We'll be laughed at. We will even be attacked in all forms of way. And here, you know, even it says that, you know, that they physical, physical, you know, like physical attacks in throughout the other parts, physical attacks will come against the people because, you know, people just want to accept it. But I love where it says that Jesus tells his disciples um, right here in verse eight, whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things as are said before you, and heal the sick there, and say to them, the kingdom of God has come here to you. So now if we go back into verse 9 and 8, and as we go back, we go backwards, he give them authority to, to cast out demons. He give them authority to, to heal the sick. So it wasn't just telling the gospel it was also telling the gospel the gospel was signs and wonders so people were were not only just hearing the word people were also being delivered and set free so it's not just about telling the word it's also about setting the captain free the captive free setting them free so that was very interesting and that caught my attention because not everyone will receive the word, as I'm saying. And so don't waste your time. And there's another part that says, um, but whatever city you enter, verse 10, whatever city you enter and they do not receive you, go out into its streets and say, the very dust of your city, which clings to us, we wipe off against, against you. Nevertheless, nevertheless, know this that the kingdom of God has come here to you. So we're not going to be accepted where we go. People are not going to listen to what we have to say. So do we waste our time with those who are not listening? No, we keep going. We move on to the next because there are so many souls that are lost. There's so many people that are needing to hear the gospel. And so practically he's telling these disciples, telling them, don't waste your time. Don't waste your time in the cities that will not receive you that don't want to hear the truth, that don't want to hear the gospel. So it's for us even now. Don't waste your times with those individuals that don't want to hear the truth. Keep going. Kick the dust off and move on to the next. Every moment here on earth as believers counts. It's very important. It's very important. And we have to remember that people will reject the truth of the gospel and when they reject the truth which he says in in 12 you know it goes on you know he says that when they reject it that it's not actually it goes down to 16 i'm sorry verse 16 when people when people reject and when it talks about even the cities rejecting it is not us that they're rejecting it is it wasn't those disciples that they were rejecting they were rejecting christ so it has nothing to do with us. So don't take it personal when you go forth and you are speaking God's word and they don't accept it. They don't receive it. Don't take it personally because it's not you that they're rejecting. They're rejecting Christ. So that's just, you know. So then um, going back to chapter 13 where... They talk about the, the city, the cities that were unrepentant. Um, and Jesus says, like in the days of Sodom, um, 
the punishment that happened to Sodom and Gomorrah will happen to the cities that are unrepentant, to the people who are unrepentant that will not receive the gospel and will not receive the truth. So we have to repent now. We have to repent now. Tomorrow is not promised. Every opportunity wasted is an opportunity of destruction coming against you. This is not the time to be sleeping. We have to be awakened because like the days in Sodom where they were doing whatever they want to do, however way they want to, destruction came with a blink of an eye and it was too late. So it's not time to be be wasted. Wasting. Okay, and so then let's jump down to verse where it talks about in Luke 17 through 18, the 70 came back rejoicing um, of the authority they had in Jesus' name and, and not in their name or their power. So my question is, are we, because they were winning souls and they seen people getting saved and demons cast out in the name of Jesus. And they realized that it was in the, the name of Jesus and how much authority that they had in his name, just saying his name. We have that authority in this time in saying his name. So then I, a question that popped in my, in my spirit was, are we winning souls and rejoicing and giving Jesus the glory? for these souls. And then do you do you even know that you have authority and power over the devil? That's the question. And if you didn't see episode 9 in the in the in in episode 8 in the authority that we have, go back and watch the episode. Okay, so and I also love um verse where Jesus in verse 21 it says that in the hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit and, and and was given thanks. So Jesus was not surprised, but reminded them that he was there when Satan was cast out of heaven. So he's not surprised when his believers used their God-given authority to destroy the works of the enemy. He's not surprised because he saw the enemy, you know, being cast down. So because as Christ was, so are we. We have that authority that he's given us to do these things. We have that power and authority. And when we realize that we have that power and authority, we start walking in it, you know. And so, But it doesn't surprise him. He rejoices. And so... Let's rejoice, you know, in him and the things that he is allowing us to do because he's within us. Um, and then he reminds that, you know, his authority, Jesus is our source of authority that makes demons subject to us, that allows us to, tr to, um, to, to allow us to, I'm sorry, Allow us to torrent on serpents, on scorpions, and, and over all power of the enemy is through the authority that Jesus has given us. And so serpents and scorpions are demon are demonic forces and, and they and, and powers. So we have authority over those um demonic forces. But then in verse 20, he talks and says that we, the authority and the power that we have, you know. Is for the purpose of souls, not for our glory. And so the question that I have for you, are you saved? Are you living for Christ? Uh, um, true, trustworthy, like truthfully, are you truly serving him? Are you, and I'm going to ask the question again as I asked back there, are you winning souls? Is your life reflecting Christ? Is your life reflecting the authority and the power that Christ has given you? Are you are you healing the sick? Are you casting out demons? Because you have those authority. You have that power through Christ. But first, 
you have to accept him. If you have not accept him, if you have not, you know, if you don't believe in him and you don't believe that you have those authority and you have that power, you can't do it. So then um, the, these, the important thing Christ says is rejoice, not because you have that ability to do these things, but to rejoice because your name is written in the, the book of the Lamb. So don't rejoice you have power. Don't rejoice you have this authority. You have it, yes. He has given it to us. But don't rejoice because you have that. Rejoice because you're able, to, he's given you authority to do these things, but it's winning souls. That's why you have this authority. That's why you have people uh, to see these signs of wonders, because when they see these signs of wonders, souls are will be one with the signs and wonders. Not to glorify you, not to, I'm not to be glorified, it's to glorify him and to bring souls into the kingdom. So, so where did Jesus get his power? And this is going to verse, uh, I thought I wrote it down, but I didn't know things. So. Okay, so let's go back. This is going to verse 22. All things have been delivered to me by my father. So where, is Jesus, where does Jesus get his power? From his father. Um, and the father who from the father who is in heaven, where we get our power and authority from Jesus. So Jesus get power, his power from the father is, a, and then we get power and authority from Jesus. So to understand as us, as a Christian in the walk of a Christian, we have to, we have to know Christ. We have to know his, his power. We have to know his authority and we will only receive these things will be given. These secret things will be given to us, which goes on here where it says that Jesus says, then he returned to his disciples and said privately, blessed are the eyes which see the things you see. 24, for I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see what you see and have not seen it and to hear what you hear and not not heard it because why these things are not given wordly they're spiritually given and in order to receive these things spiritually you have to be in tune and you have to have the holy spirit within you and that's what jesus gives us and we have to know who he is and the you know, only way to know who he is is when we pick up this bible here and we open it up and we start reading it and studying who he is and authority that he ha had, has, and what we have. Because as he was, so are we. Because if we're a follower of Christ, if we're believers, we have that same authority. Thank you, Jesus. So um, let's go on to what spoke out to me is, who is the word? Where? Oh, yes. John 1, 1. I, it it took me to John 1, 1, where about Jesus, where it says, um, Jesus is the word. And in the beginning was the word and the word was God. Oh, I'm sorry. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So Jesus is the word. So we have to know Jesus. And we know Jesus by reading the word because he was in the beginning. And we have to know the truth. And the truth is in the word. And that's why we join together. And that's why you're listening and joining with me reading this word. So let's jump to Mary and Martha. Mary and Martha. I I know many people, many of you who probably are listening have heard this over and over, Mary and Martha. It's, but... It's something that we have to keep going back to, to know our priorities. Because you have Mary and Martha, who, sisters of Lazarus, who, Lazarus in, you know, was dead. Jesus rose him. It's powerful. And then Mary, who 
sat at Jesus' feet, listening to him, desiring to hear the things that he had to say, desiring to learn from him, while Martha, at the other hand, was concerned of the preparation of the house, of getting things together, serving her guests. She was, you know, good at hospitality, which is good. There's nothing wrong with that. But what is more important is these things that are around us. And that's that's what I, I get every time I read this section is it brings me back to reality of what is more important, the things of the world, the things of man, or sitting at my father's feet and learning from him, sitting and 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 glinging from him and and studying, going you know, being able to get in his word and take time and praying, take time and studying. What's you know what's more important? So I challenge you. Which are you to to look at and see who are you? Are you are a Martha? Oh, are you a Mary? So guys, that's what I have for you today. I pray that you got something out of this. And I pray that you go back. If you don't have right now, you didn't have the time to sit and, you know, read it with me. I pray that you go back and you you read, read um, chapter 10 and that you go back and and dissect it for yourself because the Holy Spirit definitely will reveal many things to you as you read it. So I pray that you're encouraged today and uh, I pray that you continue to dig in your word every day because we're going to go through the whole book of Luke. So we look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow and you go ahead and have a blessed day. Thank you again.